Hi and welcome to Slightly Off The Beaten Track. I'm Roxana. Usually on this channel you will see myself together with my travel partner and husband Danny. Um, today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're not doing our usual travel vlog. I'm going to be talking about something that's really important to us both. Um, we're going to be talking about how to reduce our waste and how to be more environmentally friendly whilst traveling. At the end I'm going to be asking a little bit about your advice and your thoughts as well. So I'll get started. Just before I start, I want to apologise if it gets very noisy. I've got a very busy train track right behind me here, so hopefully you'll still be able to hear me pretty clearly. As someone who would probably go slightly insane and whose happiness would suffer quite a lot if I wasn't able to travel. Um, I'm here to talk about things that we can do while we're traveling to have less of an impact and to be better to our planet. It often feels like as individuals we can't do very much and I agree the brunt of the work should be done by mega corporations and governments um, because they're the ones who create all the problems however that doesn't mean that we can't do anything or shouldn't do anything um, within the realms of our reach as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about some of the things that we take with us while we travel just to help reduce uh, mostly plastic consumption um, which just help us out on the day-to-day. -day. So first of all, canvas bags. Uh, we always take them with us, they fold up really small, they nice and light and they go into our backpacks and then we use them when we're going out day-to-day -day during our travels. We can use them to buy our shopping and carry other things um, and it just helps us avoid the use of plastic bags. The next thing that we take with us are cups. I'm a bit of a tea fiend, so uh, yeah, I really enjoy trying different teas from different countries. And Danny is into coffee, so he's got a smaller one um, ready to go with his espressos. These two things are probably the best things that we take with us. These are thermal flasks, water bottles, and they're the best because when you're traveling, you often go to countries, or we have been to countries where the weather conditions can um, extreme from very very hot to very very cold um, and these are fantastic because um, if you put hot liquids in they stay hot which means that when we've been in really cold places like China um, during the winter then we can fill them up with tea and keep ourselves warm during the day um, and also it means that in very hot countries when we've been traveling around Southeast Asia we've been able to put really cold water in them they stay cold all day and not like when you have a plastic bottle and it gets horrible and lukewarm and you don't really want to drink it anymore the next thing that we take with us are these um, you've probably seen them in lots of different geysers but these are <laughs> cutlery sets sorry I've just dropped them um, which come with a bamboo fork bamboo spoon and a bamboo knife. We've also stuck chopsticks in ours because we like to eat with chopsticks. Um, oh, it's not in there, but it also comes with a metal straw and a metal straw cleaner. Um, so we can carry those around as well. And they're really good because everywhere you go, people give you plastic straws. And I often find that when I say, oh no, straw please, they still give you a straw. So what I normally do is take the straw out ready and I just give it to them and say, please can you use this straw? and they also come with little napkins which means you can just use those um, instead of using uh, wipes or um, paper paper napkins or whatever when you can the other thing that we carry around with us are boxes we actually had um, this one and a smaller one that fitted inside this one although again at the moment we can't find them um, and they're really great because we use them for quite a lot of things so we can buy them for when we go um, out and we just want to take our own food with us um, which means we can have a packed lunch it also means when we're buying street food we don't have to use whatever plastic containers they have we just keep reusing and reusing these ones we can put our snacks in during the day they're really really great it means we can take food on flight so we don't have to um, eat snacks in plastics on um, short haul flights yeah really great um, um, next what's next next are uh, what comes in this bamboo toothbrushes uh, we bought a whole pack of these before we left 
um, to go on our travels and it just means that we're not using plastic toothbrushes it's just a little thing that you can do to reduce your waste and bamboo is a really great resource to use that's pretty simple um, the other things that we use and take with us are solid shampoos and conditioners again this just saves us buying uh, plastic ones in plastic packaging they're also really good because they last forever um, so that is a really great benefit of having those things as well as the fact that it's good for the environment inside this I have um, a menstrual cup which I use while we're traveling and at home as well and if you're someone who has periods um, and a menstrual cycle uh, I would recommend you try them out they're really great not only because you don't have to go around buying uh, tampons and pads which are horrible for the environment and also really expensive um, they're really great because they're really practical because you um, don't have to change them as often uh, you can just do that in your own bathroom in your hostel wherever you're staying um, they also really small they take up absolutely no space in your luggage so they're really great they're not for everybody but um, I think maybe it's something that you say don't knock it till you've tried it they're really really good and what's great about them as well is because they're not bleached like uh, tampons and other things they're actually better for your body as well if you're able to use them and also some places just don't use the menstrual products that you will have at home so in China barely anyone uses tampons and so if that's the product that you're used to and you want to continue using uh, you should be bringing them with you and again that just takes up extra space you don't know what you're going to need um, so I think they're really great there's another couple of things that actually I haven't been able to find this morning so I can't show you but that you could also take with you but you can also take a reusable razor which I really really love it's great it's just a metal safety razor um, that I think we're used to use by men quite a lot but they're great because you can stick them in your bag all you need to do ever is change the razor head um, not even the head just the razor blade um, so they're really great and you don't have to use those horrible plastic razors and they're really nice as well and as long as you keep them in a nice secure package and it's not in your backpack that you take on a flight with you then they're great and then the other thing you can do is take tooth tabs rather than toothpaste uh, we took toothpaste on us when we first left home and then later on in our journeys when we we're in Hong Kong we were in Lush and we bought ourselves some tooth tabs and they're really great um, because you can then fill them up uh, in lots of places um, and Lush are really great at recycling their plastics as well which you really can't do with um, normal toothpaste. Danny and I try and avoid flights whenever it is possible within our budget and within our time scale. So for example when we were in Southeast Asia rather than flying from country to country we actually got overnight buses and trains. So we travelled uh, from Vietnam to Cambodia to Laos to Thailand all by bus and it was really great. Some places we've got overnight buses and there's a couple of videos we've got on that so we can um, link them somewhere and um, between Vietnam and Cambodia it was a really short journey we just got a normal bus um, and that's great because that really cuts down on the amount of CO2 and greenhouse gases that you're consuming um, and it's also a really nice way to travel if you're traveling by air rather than by land then you're missing out all these beautiful sights around you and they're part of the fun I love traveling by train you can also consider how you travel around the cities you are um, so if walking is um, an option where you are then do that it's a great way to see a place where you are Danny and I also love renting bikes out um, especially if we want to maybe leave the town go slightly further out see a bit of countryside it's a really really nice way to travel it's really environmentally friendly it's faster than walking um, and it's just great fun and then of course um, you can also get public transport like buses um, yeah don't get me wrong we completely use things like the pass app which is the Asian version of uber especially if we're traveling quite long distances uh, but when you can and when we can we avoid them and um, it's quite easily done and it's always a really fun alternative as well and then the other big thing, the massive thing for me, and hopefully I'm not coming across like one of those preachy vegans, but is the way we eat and the way we hopefully consciously consume products while we're away. So obviously um, meat production it has one of the biggest impacts on our environment. So although um, you might not want to become vegan yourself, uh, if you're looking to reduce your carbon footprint, then reducing that meat or completely stopping eating it really, really makes a difference. Um, especially if you're yeah, really conscious with your food choices. And also fishing is terrible. I'm sure 
you know, you've seen all the reports and stuff, you know, not just the overfishing, but plastic nets are really terrible for the environment. They're the things that get stuck in the water, in the, you know, in the marine life. Um, and by being able to reduce that, you're able to reduce the amount of netting and stuff that is used in the ocean and hopefully uh, having a great effect on the, on the ocean. And then my other thing is just to be careful with souvenirs that you buy. I think it's quite easy to look somewhere you want to buy your mum a present, you want to buy your best friend a present and you know you see something nice and cute and you buy it and you take it home and you don't really think about it after that. But um, there are lots of souvenirs that are really really terrible for the environment. Um, for example uh, seashells are one of the big ones and you might think well what's the harm in a seashell? But there are often you know you go to these places and they have painted seashells and they build things out of shells and they're really pretty and nice. Well they kind of come at an environmental cost because it's become an industry of course these things are they're not getting picked up off the beach they are being fished which again produces that problem with the overfishing and the nets and stuff it means that they're being taken to factories and cleaned with chemicals and acids and there are factories that are good not good for the local environment um, and have a really harmful effect on local communities and obviously you don't need me to tell you not to buy things made of ivory and bones and hooves and stuff because not only is it gross to buy bits of dead bodies to hang around your living room it's also it's cruel they're, they're not nice industries um, they hurt animals and um, no one likes to hurt animals yeah so if you do enjoy buying souvenirs for families and friends just maybe have a little think about uh, where you're buying your things from maybe spend a little bit more money in a local cooperative that support the local um, the local people and local communities, um, maybe they support local women, getting them back into jobs and just little things like that really really make a difference. If you wanted to and um, you're quite social and stuff you could also join a litter pick wherever you are, they happen quite often especially on beach towns in I guess in loads of places but I've seen it a lot in Southeast Asia and so that's a really good way to get involved, um, help the planet and get involved in the local communities and help them out. And then that's kind of all I had really. Danny and I have actually brought some life straws and currently I'm not sure where they are but they're basically straws um, that have an inbuilt filter that are meant to be really good to use um, uh, in river water and stuff. They, uh, I'll put a link but they, um, they get rid of bacteria and uh, lots of waterborne diseases uh, but we haven't really thought about using them or or we haven't really been sure where it's okay to use them in terms of tap water. And tap water is a massive one because you can carry your bottles around with you all you want, but some countries tap water is just not safe to drink. So um, what we do is we buy the biggest bottle of water we can, normally five, seven, ten litres, and fill up from there. But um, obviously, ideally, you'd be drinking tap water. So I wondered if any of you know, can life straws be used to drink tap water from? Uh, could we fill this up with tap water and um, drink with our life straws out of these? Um, I don't know if you know. We actually um, were in Thailand for a while and the, uh, the woman in our hostel was lovely and what she did is she boiled tap water then put it in the fridge and anyone in the hostel could use that. Um, but actually after a few days I realised I was having stomach ache every single day and um, at first I wasn't sure what it was, I thought it was a bug, we'd had quite a long journey previously and then I thought oh I'll see if it's the water and I stopped drinking it and the following day I stopped having stomach aches so I'm not even sure about boiled tap water so I don't know if any of you have any advice or uh, know any reliable links or sources about that and then the last thing is just to find out what you do uh, do you do any of the same things that we do, do you do any different things um, let me know in the comments because I always want to improve and do what I can to help the environment whilst traveling. Um, it's something that we really, really care about and hopefully, you know, sharing tips with each other, uh, we can continue to travel responsibly and carefully and love our planet. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, hopefully it's been informative. Um, if you want to, maybe you could subscribe down below. <laughs> I feel a bit cheesy saying that. And um, yeah, see you on our next vlog.